So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Wen Tao. I am a PhD student at the University of Illinois. Uh, today, I'd mostly like to discuss a new development tool, LVM Cov, for measuring precise and the source space and the source. Sorry, there's some echoing on my side. For measuring precise and source space code coverage of Linux kernel. So the agenda is as follows. Basically, I will quickly set up the background in terms of the existing coverage tools in kernel, and I will demonstrate how this new ARVM and cough tool can possibly uh, benefit us by its source-based feature. Uh, here, I'd actually uh, like to apologize in that we have originally mistaken the format of this mini conference. So we prepared a full NAS presentation uh, I have uh, also put up the link here, so hopefully we can have some offline extended discussions. Uh, my team has 10 in this room uh, who can hope maybe raise his hand. And uh, yeah, and a special thanks to Kate for helping us do the final moment revision. Okay, so right now in Linux kernel, uh, there are at least two coverage tools. Uh, namely KCOV and GCOV. KCOV is commonly used together with syscaller, and GCOV, on the other hand, is designed for coverage in general. But the problem here is both these two tools are performing their instrumentation at some late stages of the entire compilation pipeline, so they can only approximately correlate the execution traces back to source code. So their results are especially susceptible to optimization. And before we dive into concrete numbers and concrete examples, let's first set up some expectation. What should an intuitive coverage report look like? Uh, it must be straightforward. In terms of line coverage, let's suppose this first line of assignment here is executed n one times. We would naturally expect this very next line is executed for the same number of times, right? And since we have an if statement here, it's allowed to have part of the execution traces going into this then clause and all the rest going into this else clause. But the point here is these three numbers under this curly brace uh, must add up, thus this N2 and N1 minus N2. And in a similar sense for this uh, second if statement, uh, these three numbers uh, should also add up. And in terms of branch coverage, uh, we would expect two outcomes for either if statement, and this execution counters should once again uh, be straightforward. So uh, this conceptual coverage coverage report is exactly our goal, which exhibits precise source correlation. And since we have been talking about source code all the time, the results should not be uh, affected by optimization in any way. But let's look at uh, G how GCOB would report for this exact same code snippet uh, using the setup on the screen. Notably, we are using the default optimization level of kernel build system. And for this specific file, I think it's dash O2. And briefly explaining some GCOV notation, uh, this minus sign uh, means this line contains no code. For example, it's just an empty line or some declaration. And this hashtag means, basically means zero counters. And from GCOV's reports, we can actually notice many counterintuitive parts, uh, like in this first red box uh, in terms of line coverage, we can see some executed lines are showing up after unexecuted lines. And even if we consider this return statement in the middle, it still does not make sense, right? And the second, as for branch coverage, for for this if statement that only has a simple predicate, a simple equals equals predicate, it is reported to have 10 branch outcomes instead of just two. So uh, there are actually many such examples in kernel's GCOV reports, which is not ideal because it does not really helps, uh, helps us in terms of improving the tests or improving the kernel code itself. 
That's why we, we would like to present this new coverage tool, ARV and Cough, and its source-based code coverage feature. What's special about this tool is that it maintains dedicated mapping from the counters back to source code locations. And since these mappings are constructed at the front end and remains immutable hence after, the results are not affected by optimization. And let's see what this ALVM curve would report for the same code snippet. So basically all the uh, counterintuitive parts are now disappearing in this report. And uh, this report is consistent with our conceptual expectation. So basically uh, all these lines are executed for the same number of times. And for these branches, uh, we have two outcomes with no surprise. And uh, here's another example. Uh, remember that in the previous one, GCOV is uh, reporting some actual branch outcomes, but here it's somehow missing some of them. And once again, LLVM COV is sticking to uh, our conceptual expectation and correctly reported four branches. Sorry, four, yeah, four branches and eight outcomes. And the third example, uh, the final example is in terms of MCDC that is enforced by many safety critical industries. And uh, like, again, in this, in, in this example, GCOV is reporting for, for a simple expression like this that only has two conditions. GCOV is reporting, it has six outcomes and the three conditions, which is uh, not straightforward. And like I've presented yesterday, this LLVM curve patch has comes with another benefit that allows us to measure MCDC of Linux kernel. So, uh, so that's actually uh, the brief introduction. Um, our original plan is to dig into the gory details of how we implement this uh, source-based code coverage patch. Uh, including some of the known limitations and uh, design choices. But uh, I guess for better discussion results, uh, let's, uh, uh, let us also explore some open questions. For example, uh, what do you expect? What do you uh, developers in the room would expect? Uh, what, kind of, what kind of information do you want from our coverage report? And uh, what other development tools uh, you wish to have regarding uh, kernel test coverage? For example, I know that uh, Chuck Wolber uh, has been proposing some uh, ARLVM intrinsics modification so that we can precisely control the measurement of span and uh, get some uh, even more fine-grained coverage report. So yeah, that's basically um, the kind of feedbacks we'd like to hear from you. Thank you. This is more just, I guess, kind of a implementation question if, if you're aware, but uh, you mentioned that the uh, LLVM Cove has uh, benefits in the face of optimizations and that it is able to uh, maintain that source mapping, but does it also prevent optimizations from changing branches, removing branches, collapsing branches, um, and doing those sort of transformations in that you would get a different report uh, with the coverage turned on versus it not being turned on, like in actuality versus with the sanit uh, sanitizer enabled, I guess. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think, sorry, okay, so I'm angry. Yeah, I think the instrumented code would prevent some of the optimization passes. So I guess the, uh, the instrumented version would be hey would exhibit some different branching as the original one, but that's uh that's, that's kind of a trade off between uh being able to precisely mapping back to source code or retaining uh unaffected by the optimization. Does this answer your question? So then that would not alleviate you of then later having to do functional tests. 
So the LLVM cuff says, yes, we are in fact traversing the code. GCUB gives, in that respect, a more realistic view of what the optimized <laughs> traversal will look like, but we don't really care because said, as long as the compiler is doing its job correctly, then we show that it's following the code, then we do the functional tests and everybody's happy. So, yeah, yeah I, I have actually scrolled to some of my backup slides, and this is a quote from the uh, documentation of LLVM. So I guess those, uh, like one of the point is that the instrumented code would prevent the optimizers to uh, really optimize the instrumented part out. So yeah, I guess uh, there is some kind of impact to the uh, versus, to the differences between the instrumented version and the original version. Uh, sorry, I'm not hearing you. I see someone speaking, but I get no audio here. Can you hear me now? The question was if it's already in the kernel CI or it's planned to bring it to kernel CI as coverage tool. Yes. Did you, did you, can you hear us, uh, Wentao? Um, now it's good, now it's good. Can you please repeat the question? Okay, so I'm gonna repeat it. So my question was, uh, is LLVM Cov already integrated or is there any plan to integrate it with the kernel CI framework? Uh, no, it's currently it's not in the mainline kernel and uh, that's exactly our, what our patch does. So right now uh, in CI, I know that, uh, for example, in Red Hat CKI, they are running uh, GCOV coverage report for for certain for certain of their branches like the automotive branches, but right now LLVM COV is because it's not in the mainline kernel uh, in the first place, so it's not integrated yet. But that's definitely something desirable. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, the patch is there. It's been submitted. So. What I want to say is like, you know, the patch is out there. Like if you want it to be like in kernel CI, please review it, like and give us some feedback and hopefully like we can merge it soon. So like everyone yes, can yes, enjoy yes, it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, I think we're pretty much in time. So thank you very much for your time.